I hope you boys are ready for some true Southern decadence. I grew up in Marietta, Georgia, with fried food, stuff that was stewed within an inch of its life. Everything was full of salt, and it was delicious. I grew up eating eggs and bacon every single day of my life. I drank coffee before I went to school. I cannot for the life of me see why anybody would spend $3 on a cup of coffee with too much milk. <laughs> Arlene told me that people are less calcium deficient than they used to be because of all the fancy coffee they drink nowadays. <laughs> coffee with milk and sugar, and I would dip, you know, toast into it. Nobody knew. Nobody knew that you weren't supposed to eat that stuff back then. My mom was not a, I wouldn't say she was a gourmet chef. She had a very limited repertoire of food that she made, but I loved it. But she had some of the strangest desserts ever. She would take bananas and slice them in half lengthwise and spread Miracle Whip on them and then sprinkle chopped peanuts. It was delicious. And then she would take like canned pears, those kind of half, they're perfectly halved and cored pears. Again, a big dollop of Miracle Whip, you know, I'm sensing a theme here. And shredded Kraft American cheese on top of it. That one, not so good. I didn't care for that one so much. Uh, but she made one hell of a German chocolate cake. Uh, and she made a great pecan pie, and she made fantastic fried chicken and french fries. I never had Chinese food or pizza growing up. I remember, you know, somebody saying, let's get pizza, and I thought, that's weird. I don't want pizza. Uh, but then, of course, I discovered pizza in high school and loved it. Okay. Adopted mother, in addition to being a repressed, codependent doormat, it's kind of a great zone cook. Bacon grease. It's all about the bacon grease. There is a lot of uh, drinking and eating in the show. Is sausage different from what you usually make? No. It tastes so much more complex than it usually does. Oh, dear. You think it's gone bad. No, it's delicious. Gran is sort of that uber maternal figure that is always cooking and nurturing and taking care. I love the scene where Sookie eats the pie and lets go of Gran. Eating what's the leftover pie after Gran died is a way of Suki coming to terms with having lost her, and it's a very conscious act of grieving. Oh my god, that looks amazing. What is it? Hunter souffle. I didn't know hunters made souffles. Most don't. Dig in. When Tara and Eggs eat the souffle, the hunter souffle that Marianne baked using Daphne's heart, has a big impact on them. <laughs> you know, I feel like a superhero. I mean... You look like him. Uh, yeah. How about now? That big totem that Marianne built in front of Sookie's house during the last half of season two had flowers and all kinds of food, including just hanks of meat. We called it Dimitri, or the meat tree. There was a lot of food and drink, and you don't even want to know what was in some of that stuff. It certainly had a profound effect on everybody. If you ask me, what is the series about? When I pitched it to HBO, I said, it's about the terrors of intimacy. Aren't you afraid to be out here alone with a hungry vampire? But it's also about the nature of desire, and hunger, and thirst are a kind of desire. <laughs> 